Hey crocheters, how would you like to take a break from turning chains and keeping track of which side of your project you are on? Or how about turning out fabric that looks woven and has beautiful edges, yeah? Welcome to the wonderful world of Tunisian crochet. Today I want to introduce you to a unique form of crochet that rocked my world when I first picked it up. And yes, I understand how ludicrous that statement sounds, but I'm not kidding. I got so hooked on Tunisian crochet that I barely touched other knitting or crochet projects for well over a year. If you decide you want to get Tunisian a try after watching this video, or if you've seen it and you are already smitten and you're just looking for a detailed how-to, I've broken that out into a separate tutorial episode so this one doesn't end up being super, super long. Follow the link currently on the screen or listed down the show notes. That video will show you the basics plus my favorite tips and tricks to help you master Tunisian fast. But first, let's talk about the many pros and the couple of cons of this technique. Very different. There's a wall of crochet hooks at the shop where I work and a sample Tunisian scarf very like this one hanging in the middle of it. Yeah. It's one of my personal little guilty pleasures to see the amazed shock on people's faces when they ask about it and we tell them it is crocheted. It looks and feels so different from other crocheted objects that people have a hard time believing it. This a busy little skein is a variegated colorway of Anne from Seculo. It's a fingering weight cotton I love using to demonstrate Tunisian. Here's a swatch of this yarn knit up in stockinette stitch. Here's the same yarn in rows of half double crochet. And here it is in the most basic Tunisian stitch. It's hard to believe the difference, isn't it? The exact same yarn, three different stitches, three completely different looking fabrics. Let's look at a couple more. This is Diamante Baby, a self-printing, self-striping acrylic. And here's Wool Pop, a heathered solid. I always tell my beginning crochet students that once they have mastered the motions of yarning over and drawing up a loop, they have most of what they need to do any crochet project they really want. The rest is just details about how many do you do and where do you put them. And honestly, Tunisian crochet is no different. It uses the same two basic motions for regular crochet, yarning over and drawing up a loop. It's what you do with those loops and the hook you are using that changes everything. Tunisian is traditionally done on a long hook of some sort like these, the classic long single-ended hook. We'll talk more about other hook options later, but just know that the reason these are so long is the way rows of Tunisian are worked. Each row is worked in two parts, the forward pass and the return pass. You load up loops along the hook on the forward pass and complete them on the return pass. That's why, at a glance, this almost looks like knitting. The gorgeous fabric textures are of course the first thing I fell in love with, but what really got me addicted was the rhythm of the work. It's soothing and almost hypnotic once you get going. You never have to turn your work, so there is no keeping track of which side you are on. The right side of the fabric is always facing you. Another thing I adore about Tunisian is the edges of the finished fabric. When done right, the edges are all identical. It's so easy to seam things together or out of border later. And the last big reason I love Tunisian crochet is the magic it can make with difficult yarns. Let's face it, it happens to every yarnaholic at some point. We fall in love with a busy variegated yarn because of the colors that's in it, or we fall in love with the novelty yarn or the texture that was just so interesting. But then you get at home and you start working with it and you hate it. If it looks awful knit up and crocheting it looks worse, try doing Tunisian with it instead. I've had my feelings shift from distaste to absolute delight more than once that way, so if you have a problem child in your stash, try doing Tunisian with it. And if you don't like it by itself, try mixing it with something. Tunisian in two colors can let you easily brighten up something dark or tone down yarns that are a little too dominant in either their color or in their texture. Yes, there are a couple of issues to keep in mind because, of course, nothing in this world is ever perfect. The first is that this technique is a serious wool eater. You will go through a lot of yardage on a Tunisian project. 
Crochet typically requires somewhere between 7 and 30% more yarn than knitting does to make any given item, and Tunisian is definitely at the very top of that range, so please budget accordingly and make sure you give yourself a yardage buffer when buying your yarn for a Tunisian project. The other issue is that the top and bottom edges on straight pieces tend to roll just like stockinette fabric and knitting. There is more bulk on the back side of the fabric than the front side and that imbalance exerts outward pressure causing the top and bottom edges to curl away. A good designer will have taken that into account in their patterns and employed one or more of the following strategies to combat the roll. One, working with natural fibers that block well like wool or cotton. Two, beginning with a couple of rows of regular crochet. Three, adding a regular crochet border as a frame. And four, adding weighted elements like knotted fringe or tassels. Even on things worked in the round like my favorite fingerless mitts pattern here, there can be some roll at the edges. So adding a border at the top and the bottom edges in my opinion is a must. For a long time, most Tunisian hooks were made out of metal and ranged from 8 to 14 inches. More recently, hooks made of plastic, acrylic, bamboo, and other woods have been available. Most are single-ended, but you will occasionally see double-ended hooks like this one. These are primarily for working in the round. Yep, round objects worked on a long, straight hook. That will be a whole other video in the future. Here in the modern day, we are blessed to have access to Tunisian hooks on cables that are great for wide width projects like a blankets and shawls. Crocheters of the past could only make blankets in strips. If you find yourself loving Tunisian, there are any number of manufacturers out there who are making interchangeable hook sets. These let you build a given size to suit your project needs. Most sets will provide you with what you need for projects ranging from everything from narrow scarves up to queen or king size afghans. Regardless of the type of hook you are using, the most critical thing to remember is to use a hook a minimum of one size larger than you would normally use with the yarn, two sizes bigger if you tend to be tight. I tend to go two sizes bigger. You would normally use an H or five millimeter hook with a given yarn. Tunisian crochet should be done with that yarn with an I or a J hook instead. Believe me, please, when I say it is far better to be a little on the loose side than too tight with Tunisian crochet. If your hook is too small, the results are not pretty and your hands and wrists will hate you. By the way, if ergonomics are a, as big an issue for you as they are for me, consider buying a double-ended hook and one of uh, these ergonomic crochet hook handles. Some brilliant person out there discovered that one of uh, these plus a double-ended hook equals one ergonomic handled crochet hook. There are a number of really great books out there full of cool patterns to try, and I love browsing the shelves of used bookstores and thrift stores for vintage publications like these. Some of the older publications I've run across are real jaw droppers. But let me introduce you to my ultimate favorite book on the subject. Yes. This stinky little volume is fantastic. This is actually my second copy because my first one got water damaged. That first copy was scuffed and tattered and stuffed with sticky notes because I loved using it so much. I love the stitch guide because each of the stitch patterns in here has written instructions and charts on the same page. There is a nice legend showing the symbols and the specific shorthand for Tunisian here in the front. And there is a really well photographed how-to section in the back. I'll put a link to this book and some of the hooks and tools mentioned in this show in the show notes for you. I personally prefer hard copy for my craft books, but this stitch guide is available on Kindle if you prefer digital. For a long time, this technique was referred to by a lot of people as the Afghan stitch. And what do we traditionally call crochet blankets? Afghans. I'm going to guess that's not a coincidence since Tunisian crochet was considered a thing for making utilitarian stuff only. Potholders, placemats, and of course afghans. But thanks to designers who have latched onto this technique in recent years, there are some truly amazing patterns out there for all sorts of things. If you sort through crochet patterns on Ravelry using the attributes filter, click on crochet techniques, 
and then Tunisian slash Afghan stitch. You will find well over 7,000 patterns using this technique. I've seen patterns for slippers and socks, hats, jewelry, all sorts of tops, everything from tanks to sweaters and coats, some astounding looking shawls, bags, and even some super cool stuffies. Tunisian Afghans have also evolved a lot too. Check out some of these beauties. And yes, this vest I'm wearing is done in Tunisian stitch. This is the Tokyo Vest by Doris Chan. It's an incredibly comfortable all-season garment I love. And this light and lovely thing is a Tunisian stole that lives in my craft bag. I made it following the of sails and waves pattern. It took a little over 1,500 yards of a lace weight and was a bit of a marathon, but ooh, was it worth it. Well, are you itching to try it yet? If you are, go check out my tutorial on the basics plus my favorite tips and tricks for getting those beautiful edges I mentioned. You don't even have to wait until you have a Tunisian hook either. I'll show you how to give the method a try with just this. Yep, a plain old fashioned steel or metal crochet hook. If you dig it, then you can spend a little cash on some hooks in the book. If you enjoyed this episode today, do a girl a favor and share it with other crocheters in your life who might enjoy changing things up. And don't forget to subscribe so you can catch my Tunisian in the round tutorial when I make it and release it later this year. Now go spend some quality time with your yarn and thanks for spending part of your day with me here on the iHeart Yarn channel. Thank mm -hmm. you.